Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Mail Art Monday. So today I am super excited. I want to share a fun Halloween technique, a tutorial with you. This is for an envelope. So I'm actually going to show you how to turn this larger scale one because it is a very large envelope and most people send your standard size card. So instead I'm going to show you how to do this as a postcard, but I had to create it as an envelope because I absolutely love this postage stamp, which I'm still going to use on the back of the postcard. I know some of you guys have seen me use that before. This one's going to Viva Las Vegas Stamps for their swap. They have a postcard swap right now. So I'm sending my postcards in this and then I'll put my regular postage stamp here. So today, let me show you it as a postcard. So here is it as a postcard, pretty much the same except that postage stamp is going to go on the back and you don't have the address block. So a little less coloring up here. I really like the way the clouds were a little darker on the other one. So we're going to go darker than what I used in this one. But let me go ahead and get started. So this is a standard four by six postcard. So we've got a piece of paper cut to four by six here and it's like a really thick cardstock or chipboard maybe. For doing this, I want to show you guys this so you don't do. I have screwed these up a couple times. When you do masking and you have everything close together like this, the items in the very front are what you want to stamp first. So you have to kind of visualize this. If you, because this looks like it's in the front, if you stamp this first and then the house, which would be, I guess you could still stamp this first, but then you have to go to these two. If you do that and then the house where your werewolf is, which is, I, this is when I screwed up, he will not be in front of the house, if that makes any sense to you guys. So my recommendation for this one, start on the left, stamp your haunted sign, then the werewolf, then the fence, so that they're grouped together, because this looks like, to me, the closest possible thing to us, and then him, then the fence, then the house. So I hope that makes sense. It'll make sense as we go here. So let's get started. For the haunted sign, we want it to be just a little bit, sorry, I'm setting mine in front of me so I can see it here, a little bit centered. So I've got that stamp here. Today I'm going to grab some black ink. We've got archival, just whatever you've got is fine. I'm going to ink this up as long as you have it nice and juicy. I need to refill a couple of mine, so we're going to hope this is one of my good ones. And I want to stamp it just a little off from the center. A little pressure. And remember, I have that foam mat underneath of here that helps my stamping. Oops, dropped my stamp. Not on the image this time. So that looks really good. Now, you'll notice this doesn't have the stick that we do here. So you can put that stick on yourself however you want. What I'm going to do is we're going to grab, like, take my stamp off of that block, and then I use the edge of my stamping block and just a black marker. I've got a vellum writer here. So you guys can use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. You're just going to kind of fake that there's a stake behind that. And I don't draw it all the way down because I want it to look like it's into the grass. So we'll just stick a couple little sprigs up here. Draw some wood grain really quickly. Okay. And that's really all there is to that. And if you want it to be 3D, you just draw a second line, just a hair off from the first one, and make it connect. I know it's kind of hard to see on that camera, but you'll see that that's got a little stake back there. All right, you don't have to add a lot of detail to this. Your inking will do that for you. So we'll set that to the side. Now we want to mask this off. And again, I still have my mask. I save my mask, so I have them from when I did this the other day, I actually made a few of these. I might send these in for my, I was gonna use the ones from my last tutorial for the swap, but I love this so much. It's such a tough decision. So you guys, if you join the swap, it's gonna be a surprise. I don't know what people are gonna get. So I'm gonna put this down first and then I just ripped a piece of paper and see this one I did a little shorter even than what I had done before and a little wider. Don't let that worry you. We're just going to take it and I'm just going to literally fold the paper up because it was too long. And so I've made several of these and, you know, every time it comes out a little different. So we'll just leave it like that. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp our werewolf. 
And this guy is the coolest. I love him. I used to love that Teen Wolf way back when with Michael J. Fox. Um, so, that just is what this makes me think of. I think that's what it was called. I could be wrong on that. Make sure I got... And you can see the light to make sure you have all the ink on that. And I want his foot to overlap behind it so that it gives you depth that he's actually standing behind the sign. So I've got it kind of where it looks like he's behind it. A little pressure. I want to make sure there's good pressure because I don't want this to. Oops. There we go. Make it look like any bald spots on there. Alright, I think you guys know that I love my vellum writer pen. And I have no idea. Or not my vellum writer, my first marker. Alright, I don't know where it is at the moment. I was going to touch up a little edge here, but that's okay. So we're going to grab the mask I used for this one. Now when you guys make a mask for this stamp, let me just run a little bit. Okay, when you guys make a mask for the stamp, you almost have to really guess where his sleeve is. Because you can see here it's white and then white and then under the vest. So what I did was I imagined his shirt tucking in here and I kind of just guessed on the sleeves. You can make that however you want. There is no wrong way to do it. So let's stick that down there. And when I cut this, I did not cut the, let's see if that'll focus, the claws out as part of the mask. Anything in solid black, the inking will go over. So you don't have to worry about that. You can, it's not gonna hurt anything. That might save you some time. All right, so now we've got these two. We're gonna go ahead and do our row of pumpkins in the fence here. I love the stamp. So I want it to be just a little bit away from the edge. So let's move this out of the way and we'll get this inked up real quick. And the way the stamp is made, it is perfect with that house. It lines up, I'm telling you, I don't think it could have been designed more perfect. I did, well, think it was meant to go with this, but the porch and this line up just so exact. It's amazing. So let's do right about there. I don't want it to overlap the sign. It can, it wouldn't matter. I just, I don't know. For some reason, I just feel like it makes it look farther away this way. Plus I like coloring the pumpkins. I love pumpkins. So there we've got that. Back on camera here. I've got my mask and you guys have seen this mask a bunch if you watched the last one telling you save your mask it will save you so much time cutting them out it really does so we'll put that down there and then what I usually do is I just take a little scrap of paper normally I would cut it but that's okay actually we'll do it without that so you guys can see this for this little part of the house actually I'm gonna use a little scrap paper so I just ripped a tiny little tiny scrap off of here and I'm going to use it to cover up, and I'm still using that repositionable tape, the little triangle on the lamp post to keep it white. You can also just go over your image with a white jelly roller, which is what I've done on a couple of them. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change much. So it's up to your preference. All right, now we're gonna stamp our really cool house here. I guess it would be a haunted house for this for this postcard. So let's get it inked up here. And you really don't have to stamp all of it because it's going to go off of the image. But I don't know how much, so I just do extra and then wipe everything off that comes off the edge. Now what I want to do is I want to line up the corner of this fence with this corner of the house. You guys can see that. So we're going to take it, flip it. And I actually drew, I'll show you guys after, lines on the corner of my, on my stamp. Sorry for my head being in the way, guys. Hopefully it wasn't. So that I would see where to line that up. Alright, let's get all this ink off here really quick. Let's take off these this one really quick so you guys can see the pillar is still there so the reason I do that is that light post kind of follows right along that pillar 
it's not really going to hurt anything if you do it the other way, but that's up to you. All right, we're going to put the mask of our house down now. Stick it on there. And we're going to go ahead and lay down some color. So this is where you can get fun and messy. I've got my fabulous makeup sponges here. And today I'm going to use a couple of different colors. The background color is going to be a little different than what I had used before. So we've got chipped sapphire, peeled paint, and shabby shutters. So we're going to start with our shabby shutters and lay down our base green. So just something light. Just so that we have a little color to go with our dark color when we get to it. You don't have to do this step, you can skip it completely. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. I think it's just more hab habitual for me. I like to have a couple different layers. So if you just have one green and one blue, then use your one green and one blue. Use whatever you have. If you want to make the sky purple, go for it. If you want to make the sky orange, nobody's here to stop you. All right, so we've got our base green down. And now we're going to go in and add our darker color. And I totally forgot to grab that mask out. So we're going to make a new one really quick. You guys will get to see how fancy this is. <laughs> Hopefully you guys know by now that it's really not fancy at all. I've got a piece of cardstock here. We're just going to... Rip it. We're going to use the small one just because I like it. I don't know. So we're going to take it, lay it down there, grab our, what color is this? Peeled paint. And same thing, just lay some color on. Just kind of do it sporadically. This is, since it's supposed to be grass, you don't want it to look uniform or fancy. This is, there's nothing really, whoops. Although you do want to hold on to your mask when you go to do that. And this I really just want to sponge it on because I want it to have texture in it. So I don't want to blend it out a whole lot. I mean, you can. It's just whether it's going to look closer to you or not. Like this, I have too much light. So that's where you really don't even need the light. It's more habitual for me. So we've got some grass texture in there now. Oh, I want a little darker underneath the hem though. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add our sky in. And I want a little bit more. So we're just going to... That'll give us a little bit more to it. And I'm using the chipped sapphire. Now again, I did not use this color last time. So we're going to hope it works. This is how you find out. Oop, and I just realized it was not lined up. There we go. And you can see a little bit of that the light post through there. Don't worry about that because again, you have the white um, gel pens or what markers, whatever you guys use, paint markers, that will fix that. Oh yes, I love this color. See, this will look more like a night sky. And so I'm just kind of you can lay this on any which way. Just get your some clouds in the sky. If I can hold my mask still. I need, I've used these so many times that I really need to put re, new tacky positionable stuff on them. All right, let's make this a really dark cloud in this corner. And then a little more there. Okay. And you know what? I think I'm going to add one more really dark one, like right here. So right over the house. Just lay the color down. Got a little green on there. That's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's make this corner really dark, too. And I'll show you why. I don't know if you guys noticed in the original envelope, but I did add some stars. And I think I want to do that to this. All right, so that is it for our inking. This will be one of the first videos, I think, maybe the first one, that I'm actually going to show you guys. I'm going to add some color with some markers this time. I usually just ink everything. So we're going to take off these masks. This is the fun part where you actually get to see what everything turned out like. 
apologize guys, my phone's updating apparently. And right, let's take it off there. Get all the repositionable pieces off. Alright, so here is the card as it stands now. Oh man, super inky guys. <laughs> That's what happens when you reuse, reuse your sponges and they have two different colors on both sides. So I've got a couple orange markers here. We're going to use, why not? Let's use Spectrum Noir OR2, which I believe is what I used, and then I added another one for color. So it doesn't have to be fancy, just go in and kind of color your pumpkins. I should have used the white end, that would be a lot faster, but. That's all right. And actually, I think I colored the eyes in too when I did this. So we're just gonna go through that way. You want this to be quick and simple. That way, if you're doing a bunch of them to send out for Halloween, and you guys are welcome to take this and run in whatever direction you want with it. But when you're making a lot to send out to people, I know you don't wanna spend a whole lot of time. So there's some cute little pumpkins for the ones on the front. I'm gonna use the Marvy La Plume Number two, it's number La Plume two, and then number seven in orange. I don't know why that's not in focus. Just to add a little different color to some of the spots in the front. And I'm just kind of haphazardly tossing some color on here. And that just gives us a little more depth. Okay. So that was really it for that. Now I want to color up the stems. I'm going to use another. Marble Plume Pen in light green, number 11. And I got these at, I believe, Tuesday morning. So if you guys have one of those, I think Michael's or Joanne's or one of those sells them also in Hobby Lobby. But I got them really cheap, so just an idea if you have one. So I just colored the stems. I'm going to go to the gray, same thing. And just add a little color in the fence just so it kind of pops forward a little bit more. And then I also want to go around my images just to give them a little depth. It's up to you, you don't have to do this step and it doesn't matter if you go in the lines, out of the lines. You want this to be quick and haphazard. It gives it that more, I don't know, less planned vibe and it looks more natural. So I want to add a little shading underneath here And I'm going to go ahead and go in, well I guess not, I was going to add in, you can draw in parts of the sleeves and things if you want them to be more stand out. It doesn't really matter either way. I think the shading is really going to be enough though. So, okay, hopefully you guys can see that. And let's go ahead, I didn't really do it around the house, but we'll do it around this front porch here, just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna add some light in those windows to give you that really haunting feeling. Like there's something going on in the house and we don't know what. So just pick a couple windows, throw some lights in it. It doesn't have to be particular fancy. You don't have to make it completely solid colored in, nothing. All right, so now we've got this. I wanna use the, we're gonna switch markers on you guys because this is the one that I have that's in a light color, the Distress Antique Linen marker. And make sure it still works. We're gonna color in our werewolf face, just to add a little bit, you know, try to stay away from his eyes and his teeth. Don't forget those are there. I mean, if you color it completely, you probably won't notice a big difference, but we just, I don't know. And just add a little bit down there on his foot too. So that's it. Now I'm going to take this where you guys can see it here a little bit better. We're going to color in the sign. Same thing, doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just going to really haphazardly color. <laughs> that's the part of this, it doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to be a pro at it. You don't have to be, you know, Copic specialized, whatever. Um, I've got the vintage photo now. And I'm just going to do a couple little lines to add that wood. So you have two different colors. 
and that gives you more of that wood feeling. Alright, take it off so you can see, see the whole card. And I believe, oh, only one last thing, if I can find it. Here we go. I've got this tiny little stamp of some birds that I got in the grab bag, and I really am not sure what number that one is, but I'm sure we can find out if you guys really want to know. It is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp it up here in the sky, and then we'll add some stars. So, and it actually looks like bats, which is kind of what I really like about it. So, there you guys go. See a little haunting above the house? And we've got that white jelly roller pen. And in the darkest spots of the sky, I'm just basically adding some dots. And that's going to give you the effect of the stars being out. So I'll let you guys see that. And you want to go big and small. You don't want them to all be the same size. And why not? Let's put some down there too. Okay. So you guys can see some stars there. And then the only other thing I want to do, and one thing if you use the Copic versus another plain water based, is they might go through. But that's okay because it's on the address side of the envelope. It just gives it a little color. Or the postcard, sorry, not the envelope. On the envelope, it does not go through because it just goes through the first layer. But it did go through on the postcards. So I just want to stick that really awesome postoid up here. There we go, guys. There is one awesome haunting postcard. You can send these in the mail, and they will make it through just on your standard card sock. I have not had any problems. If you are worried, like I said, you can buy the white chipboard and stays on, will stamp on the chipboard. And then you can use you know, your alcohol-based markers, which will be Sharpie, Copic, Spectrum Noir, whatever you like. And through the chipboard type, it does not go through. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And remember, you can take this. Let me take this out a little bit. And you can also turn it into an envelope. You just change your spacing a little bit more. And with this, you would stamp them in pairs. So again, you know, your items that are in the front first. And that's really it. And I just added a really fun label because I thought the red was a good contrasting color. So if you guys want to join that swap, go over to our Facebook group for the Viva Las Vegas Stamp Groupies. And don't forget to check out the blog. It will have all of the links to all of these stamps, and I will link it directly below here in the video. And I hope you guys come back to join us starting this month. We have a couple of other people joining us. So on the face or on our Viva Las Vegas Stamps blog, there will be a couple of different people participating. Every Monday now is going to be Mail Art Monday. They will not all be videos, but there will be a Mail Art tutorial. So I hope you guys can join us over there, and I will be back, I think, next month with another Monday video. And I'm going to try to do one actually on a Tuesday later this month because I have one more really fun one, and I will give you guys a sneak peek since you've hung around this long. So, ah, yeah, love it, guys. Okay, that's quick. It is so fun. So that one, I'm going to have to sneak it in there and just share it with you guys. Um, you guys have a fabulous day and I hope you guys are enjoying these. And if there's anything you really want to see, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, follow along. Um, please like this if you actually do like these. Um, and let me know what you would like to see. I, you know, I love to see new ideas and play with different things. So you guys have a fabulous day. Thanks guys.